can turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on his job. Now you're cute. I feel good. Good morning and welcome to Positively Milwaukee. Have you found yourself wishing things would just go back to normal? Well, you're not alone. We all have. Baseball season should be underway. We're supposed to be looking forward to Summerfest and a city full of people for the DNC, but now everything is in question. When will we go back to work? When will the kids go back to school? And when will our summer festivals return? Well, Visit Milwaukee put together a video that will make you smile and give you hope. And I think you're gonna enjoy this as much as we did. In this time of uncertainty, it's important to remember that what makes us who we are, our history, our diversity, our passion to innovate, the natural assets that bring us a calming joy, and most of all, our warm, enduring generosity of spirit remain unchanged. While we may be physically separated right now, we have come together as a community in inspiring ways. Our distilleries are making hand sanitizer. Our manufacturers are working together to make protective equipment. Fundraisers have been started for hospitality workers. Blood drives are being organized across the city. Restaurants are giving away free meals. And our children are painting messages of encouragement on rocks and sidewalks all over their neighborhoods. These people, and so many more, give us hope and remind us that the things that make us a community will never change. There are still, and always will be, good things brewing in Milwaukee. One day, when this is all over, we know we will see you again. Our hotels will make up a bed for you. Our restaurants will set their table. Our cultural and outdoor attractions will be ready for you to explore. Our slate of festivals and concerts will keep you entertained. We will once again be able to cheer on our favorite sports teams. And the city will be alive, hosting meetings, events, and weddings. Visit Milwaukee will be here too, ready to show you all our city has to offer, starting with a warm embrace and a cold beer. Until then, be kind to yourself and your neighbors. Please keep dreaming about your next adventure and stay safe. We have so many things to be thankful for. The main one, we're alive. I hope you can find gratitude in each and every day. Well, how far would you go to help someone you don't know? Donate money, purchase a necessity, or try to be their friend. All nice gestures, but would you undergo major surgery to help someone you don't know? Think about it. One Wauwatosa woman did just that, but there's more to this determined mom. She made a decision to change a life through her gift to a stranger. And we had Natasha from the Philippines, Pedro from Brazil. It's clear the minute you enter the Wauwatosa home of Linda and Mark Carlson, they open their hearts to people they've never met. They're all very unique. These are pictures of some of the 10 foreign exchange students the Carlsons have hosted over the years. They had outhouses, they had dirt floors, and for him to come to the United States was a really big transition. Linda Carlson shares another example of her giant heart, scars from a major operation after she made a decision to donate a kidney to a stranger. They do a two inch incision, he puts his hand in and he pulls out the kidney from that two inch incision. She was motivated after a friend's 25-year-old daughter went into kidney failure, and she saw this front-page newspaper article. The end of March, the Journal Sentinel ran a front-page article that said, you have to share your spare. That inspired the 55-year-old to act. And I read that, and I was like, you know, I'm healthy. I have two, <laughs> I think. Um, I, could, I could do this. So she went under the knife for someone she never met. I thought if I can help just one person get their life back, that would just be awesome. Carlson made that decision before telling her husband. I don't consider myself special. I just, I didn't even hesitate and I didn't really even ask my family. I just You did? not <laughs> Now you've got four kids. Four kids. And your husband, you didn't ask your family? I kind of just started the process. <laughs> 
Ask for any... forgiveness later, you know. Um, but did anybody say, hey, mom, wait, 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 wait. You know, the only one that was hesitant is my daughter, who's an ICU nurse. <laughs> And I was like, really? You you work in this? And she's like, yeah, I know. And that's why I'm hesitant of having she you understand. do this. She understood. Well, she understood the risks. The risks, yeah. Her husband of more than 30 years knew his strong-willed wife would do what she wanted. She's a very independent person. Sometimes when she gets an idea in her head, it's best just get out of the way. But Mark Carlson was also proud his wife wanted the chance to change or save a life. I could quickly see, you know, the motivating factor for Linda on, on why she wanted to do it and why it was important to her and why she felt really great about it. And why would you want to stand in the way of that? You know, it's a great opportunity for somebody. A friend told Linda about a softball coach who was on dialysis. So Linda got tested and found out she was a match to Ken Frankie. The donor coordinator gave her that news. She's like, you're a match. Let Ken know. I said, I don't know Ken. <laughs> How can I let Ken know? I don't know him. Right before surgery, Linda got a chance to meet the man who would get her kidney. He came with his, his ex-wife, his daughter, his son. And this is Ken. But there were so many similarities. He has a daughter named Amy. I have a daughter named Amy. He coaches at Kewaskum High School. All of my relatives are from Kewaskum. Carlson points out there's a bright side to being a living donor you have basically the best physical of your life. To tell you how thorough they are, okay, I'm 55. I had to go back for a second pregnancy test. <laughs> Carlson is healing well. I don't wake up in the morning and say, oh my gosh, I only have one kidney. I mean, life is totally 100% back to normal. I felt like I was called to do this. Once I, once I made that decision. The best part, now you have a friend for life, Yeah. basically. Yeah, exactly. And Ken, once in a while, he'll be like, you know, your kidney just feels like it wants to come home for a visit. <laughs> so I'm like, let my kidney come home for a visit, Ken. Come on over, we'll have a cup of coffee. And for Linda, she's the perfect example of courage, compassion, and selflessness. I just hope that I can inspire at least one person. If every person who donates their kidney can inspire one more person, it'll be like a chain reaction. People like Linda Carlson could make even a skeptic believe Earth Angels really do exist. Because even though she gave up one kidney, she clearly has her huge heart. I want to be an advocate. I want to answer questions for people, let them know that there's nothing to be afraid of, and that you can so change someone's life. She's doing something beyond just her, just living and experiencing, but is given to society as a whole. And I think that's something that's, that's a powerful motivation. What better feeling is there in the world than to make someone's life better? Such an act of courage. Now, I should point out, this story was filmed right before social distancing became a way of life. A healthy attitude starts with a healthy body. So it's wonderful that a Milwaukee farm is making sure people have nutritious food to eat while supporting local farmers. The farm is at 55th and Silver Spring, and it's a different kind of a fast food. Here's Tony Atkins. A line of cars, customers making their way through a drive through along Silver Spring for some fast food to go. That's probably going to be dinner tonight. But this drive through isn't like one you'd see at a fast food restaurant. Here at the farm, a few dollars would get you a nice bundle of fresh foods. For 20 bucks, they get a very large bag of produce, 35 to 40 some pieces of fruit and vegetable and then six pounds of mashed potatoes. And while customers here have to pay for the food that's available, Tom says the goal here is really to provide an income for farmers who have been hit hard during these times. Organizer Tom Schmidt says lots of fresh food goes to waste because of restaurant and business closures. This drive through keeps that food from going to waste while bringing money into the food supply chain. That's an awesome thing. It's also a good way to support a local community yeah. that grows fresh vegetables. For now, Tom says his number one goal is giving people a safe place to get food. No contact, all while helping those who need it. We're not trying to be in the grocery business. 
We're trying to be in to take some load off the farmer business and give people a safe shopping experience. A safe experience, putting food on many different tables. A great idea. Again, it's all part of the Ultimate Farm Collaborative at 55th and Silver Spring. We do have a link to this on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page. Positively Milwaukee continues with how local doctors are fighting the spread of coronavirus in a different way. And sending COVID-19 patients home. More happy moments from the hospital when we return. Welcome back. Coronavirus is claiming the lives of more African Americans than any other group in Milwaukee and Wisconsin. But there is a group of physicians offering a new resource to combat the crisis and hopefully save lives. The coronavirus pandemic means an urgent crisis for the African American community in the Milwaukee area. Most of the fatalities are black. Four physicians from the Cream City Medical Society gathered here outside the TMJ4 studios to address the deadly problem. Dr. Renee Settle Robinson. We decided that we needed to raise a voice with regard to what's happening with the coronavirus pandemic and how it disproportionately affects our black community. The doctors warn more than 70% of the deaths are African American. Following guidelines is crucial. Get your hand sanitizer right after you touch those surfaces and clean your hands and sterilize your hands before you do anything with your face. Blacks are more prone to high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, and lung disease. They're more likely to have service jobs and live in crowded living conditions. People live close to each other and if people have limited resources, so people in the city are more likely to take the bus. Of course, the bus is not gonna wipe down the seats between passengers, so you know we're coming into contact with, with the virus more often. Dr. Janine James says patients should pay close attention to their bodies. You have to have the faith to be strong and to do what's being recommended, hand washing, separation, hand sanitizers, and listen to what your body is telling you. The CDC now recommends wearing a face mask. Dr. Izzard says if you cannot afford a mask, you can put one together yourself. I got a mask here. This one made out of paper towel or rubber bands. Dr. Hillary Evans says social distancing also means limiting people in your home. It just should be the family that lives with you that should be in the house. No one should be coming over, no play dates, no social gatherings like house parties. It's really important because they could be asymptomatic carriers coming into your home and you possibly could live with your grandmother or grandfather and transmit the virus to them. But social distancing does not have to mean isolation. I probably think a better term might be physical distancing because we don't want people to socially isolate themselves. And these doctors warn don't wait until it's too late to seek medical attention. The message that I have for African Americans is continue the faith if they feel sick, they need to be evaluated by somebody. This is not a time to stay away from the doctor. And what we don't want is sick people not receiving the medical attention that they need to have. And if you are sick and have no doctor, Cream City Medical Society will help. Email them at covidmke at gmail.com. We will try to get back to you, either direct you to the right resource, or we'll try to take care of it ourselves. Carol Meekins, TMJ4 News. And I want to give you that email address again. It's on the bottom of your screen, covidmke at gmail.com. Well, there are many people doing a lot of helpful things during the Safer at Home order, including an Oconomowoc woman who is one feature in this week's Four Positives. Meet Trisha Griswold. She is a seamstress who normally at this time of the year would be making prom and wedding dresses or maybe just tailoring suits. Well, she put her talents to work sewing masks for frontline workers throughout South, Southeast Wisconsin, 1,100 of them to be exact. We want to say thank you to Trisha. You are our hero. <laughs> Horns honking and neighbors yelling for Shannon in Kenosha. She turned 50 a few days ago. Her daughter had a huge surprise party planned, but she had to cancel it. So. This is what she organized, a surprise drive-by. Family, friends, and co-workers decorated their cars, drove by to wish Shannon a happy birthday. Love seeing that. 
The Milwaukee Bucks created some arts and crafts to keep kids entertained. The team made coloring sheets, two kinds of puzzles, even a basketball hoop craft projects. You can download this activity for free. All you have to do, go to bucks.com slash play, kick on, click on games and activities. Well, a lot of cheering for patients as they leave the hospital. They battle coronavirus and they won. Doctors and nurses lined up to send them home. We want to thank Advocate Aurora for sharing this video. We like to see people survive this virus. It is so uplifting to see. Well, many of us are looking for positive signs during this pandemic. One Milwaukee artist got permission to create a mural on a south side building. It's a visual treat for everyone. Katie Crowther has that story. Milwaukee native Mauricio Ramirez is known for creating murals here and across America. The coronavirus pandemic putting much of his work on hold too. Some of the projects that I had uh, planned on are being delayed and just kind of waiting for all this to blow over. As we all wait, he decided to take action using his own money for paint and supplies and getting to work in honor of people who are inspiring all of us right now. I want them to, you know, feel a sense of positivity, you know, during all this. His newest mural at 6th and Lincoln across from the Basilica of St. Josephat is an ode to healthcare workers. They're out there battling on the front lines and I just kind of wanted them to show them some love. A tribute to those frontline heroes in our community and beyond. Right now, I think uh, our biggest heroes right now are uh, the people working in the healthcare field. He hopes it brings everyone some inspiration right now. Anytime I could brighten up someone's day with a little bit of art, it always makes me happy. And it makes us happy as well. And as Katie said, you can check this out at 6th and Lincoln. We have more Positively Milwaukee ahead, including how the city came together to light the night in honor of 414 Day. And we're going to shine a light on the arts and culture scene with a beautiful tribute video. On Positively Milwaukee, we like to celebrate our city's arts and culture community. Imagine MKE released a video that features the poem Life in Motion by Milwaukee Poet Laureate Dasha Callie Hamilton. Check it out. I see you. trying to snip yourself free from the clash of fabric patterns. Outsize the outline of your fierce and stunning soul. Coast, be not ocean. Edge, be not your end. I smell the salt water in your conversation a slow leak of truth from the corners of your grin. I see you, fumbling to wrap yourself in the wind. But I know a costume when I see one. You carve your journey through fire, blaze ash compacting in your chest, footsteps forged into scorched earth like rising breaths of sage. Glancing backwards will always be an inclination. Forward is your instinct. I see you. Hobbling together a truth of your own. Reconsidering the broken pieces. Polishing the gemstones in your scars. You are incomplete, and you are the universe. You are an ever-evolution. Ever-evolution, you are. So profound. There is a Milwaukee Artist Relief Fund, and we have put a link to that on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page. Well, it was quite a sight. The lights of some of our most recognizable landmarks all came together at a time when we are apart. And as Tom Durian tells us, it was a show of solidarity that we will beat this virus. 
I think it's a cool idea. I think it shows like community solidarity. Andy Silverman is the man behind 414 Day, the day we celebrate all things Milwaukee. It's about figuring out what you love about Milwaukee and celebrating that as best you can. But with COVID-19, this year looks a lot different. So TMJ4 asked people to light the night, shine a light through your window or turn on lights to let your neighbors know we're all in this together. I do think a lot of people are feeling lonely right now and I think it's a cool way where I think it's, it's good to remind your neighbors that you're around and um, that you're thinking about each other. From first responders on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic, to Brew City landmarks, the lights were on. At Miller Park, where the Brew Crew should have been taking on the Phillies tonight, with Mr. Baseball calling the game on Good Karma Brands radio stations, the lights shined bright. Looking out for each other, and it's a hard time, but yet we're gonna we're gonna make it. We're gonna get through it. In neighborhoods all across the city, lights were shining. The Sherman Phoenix itself a story of success, rising from the ashes of a different turbulent time in this city. At Fiserv, where fans anxiously await the return of the Bucks' historic season, a golden glow. A beacon of light in the skyline for nearly a century, the Gaslight Building offered a flicker of hope for our troubled city. And from that old flame to a new resident of the skyline, the BMO Building lit up tonight, a symbol of the future and what's to come in Milwaukee. And thanks to our Tiffany Ogle from the Morning Blend who inspired everybody to light the night. I'll be back with my quote of the week. Time now for my quote of the week inspirational words to get the week started with positive thinking. And today's quote comes from motivational speaker Les Brown. His words, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Have a good week, everybody, and stay positively Milwaukee.